good. I feel that. Whenever you're down in the dumps and Satan's got your back and up against the wall, it's that holy that's going to keep me alive. It's the Holy Ghost and fire that's going to keep me alive. One more time. It's the Holy Ghost and fire. Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse number 9. Paul would write, Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lives, he lives unto God. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I want to use for a subject, ministering just for a few moments tonight, one and done. One and done. And not just O-N-E and done, but W-O-N and done. One, it was one time, never to be done again, and when he went that one time, he won the battle that one time 
never to be fought again. One and done. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We ask that you would anoint us tonight to minister. We depend upon you tonight. We ask that you would help us to deliver this word you've laid upon our hearts. Anoint it and anoint our ears to hear what you would have us say. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said amen and amen. Everything that Christ accomplished for us at Calvary's cross, everything that Christ accomplished, I'll say it right, at Calvary's cross was not for Himself, but it was for us. Every single thing that Christ did was for you and it was for me. The victory that He won was for you and for me. The price that was paid to atone for all sin was for you and for me. All the blessings that are afforded was given to you and for me. Everything that was done, everything, by Jesus Christ was done solely for you and for me. But as we look at this, these two verses, verses 9 and 10, there's two words that I want to focus our attention on tonight. One is death, and the other is dominion. Death and dominion. Paul would say, as I read to you just a moment ago, that knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. The word dominion simply means rulership, lordship, to exercise authority over. Death simply means a state of supremacy. Death was never intended by God to affect us. You and I, in the mind of God, really in reality, when He created mankind, He did not create us to die. He intended for us to live forever. But the fact of the matter is because of sin, death is a direct result of the fall. When you look at death, most people look just as a physical situation, a physical event. But death is so much more than just physical. It is spiritual. For when man fell, man was separated from God. There was a gulf between God and man. And the Bible would even go so far as to state that we were dead in trespasses and in sin. Because of sin, the wages of sin is death. Now I want us to look at that for a moment. The wages of sin is death. Not only physical, but spiritual. Separation from God. And as a sinner, it is separation from God, both spiritually and eternally. The moment the unbeliever dies and wakes up in eternity, he or she wakes up in a state of spiritual separation from God for eternity. And every person that is in hell, the billions of people that are in hell right now, if they were to come back on this earth for one moment, they would plead with you, don't come where I am. But the fact is, for the most part, it would not change most people. It would not change most of everyone. It might change a few, but for the majority, it would not change the heart. But I cannot imagine where I'm separated from God 
for eternity. What we felt this morning as Joseph was leading, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. I can't imagine not having that and not experiencing that in eternity. Knowing the flames of hell are real. The bitterness is real. The harshness is real. The loneliness is real. But the Holy Spirit said the wages of sin is death. When you think of the word wages, you think of somebody paying you. But sin doesn't pay. It costs. Now I want you, I want that to sink in. Sin does not pay. It costs. It costs more than what we are willing to give up. It costs so much more than what we are willing in ourselves to pay. Sin is a cruel taskmaster. It takes, it takes, it takes. The direct result of sin is death. When the fall took place, after God had performed the first sacrifice, right after that, He would have to expel the first family from the Garden of Eden. Lest they take part of the tree of life. You think about that. He had to expel the first family from the Garden of Eden. The ground was now cursed, or it would be soon cursed. It is cursed. And he would have to remove himself with an angel, a cherubim, with a flaming sword, guarding the entrance the Garden of Eden. Lest they take hold and partake of the tree of life. From that moment on, every person that has ever lived with the exception of two people have tasted death. Death, the Scripture says, is an enemy. It is an enemy of God. Death is the opposite of life. Just the other day I was looking on the internet. I was at home and I was looking at something online and they showed a picture of a certain individual, a Hollywood actress, who is a lesbian. And it stated that she and her partner are having a baby. And they showed the picture, a recent picture, and you can look into the eyes of this individual and see nothing but emptiness, nothing but death. I want you to, th I want you to get this. You can even look in some people's eyes and see the hollowness there. You can see nothing there except death. For that's what sin results in. That's the end results of sin. It is death, and it will be death. Every person with the exception of Enoch and Elijah have tasted death, and yet they and the great tribulation will taste death. Every person has been affected by this. Everyone, it is appointed for us to die once. Everyone will breathe their last breath. Every, every one of us in this building, those watching by television, by radio, by the inter internet, every one of us will taste death at one point. And when you close your eyes in eternity, there are no more chances. All of our chances are on this side of eternity. That is why we plead with you, you better make sure that you have a right relationship with God. You better make sure your calling and election is sure. You better make sure that your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. Because if you're not sure, you can make it sure. 
All it takes is for you just to say, Lord, forgive me and let me make it right with you. Come into my heart. All of our chances are on this side of the grave. One of my last meetings where I was in, Brian and I got there, and before the service started, there was a man that was outside. You can tell this man lived a hard life. Sin ages you. I don't know how old this young man was, but he looked, just to put it bluntly, he looked awful. A hardened face. A mind that was in and out. He sat down on the front row. On stage left. First seat. And the whole service as I was preaching, I could see that the Lord was dealing with him about his soul. He would squirm. He couldn't pay attention. His mind was wandering. He was trying to not to focus on what was on what was at hand. Even to the point of getting up and walking out. And someone chased after him and brought him back in. When the Lord deals with you, when the Lord moves upon your heart. That's His time of saying, you need to make it right. That's Him telling you, you don't have much time left. I go back in my mind. I must have been 19 years old, maybe. Crossfire were meeting on Wednesday nights at that time. We wound up in one service over there. And I don't remember what was preached that night, but I do remember the altar call. As I stood up in the front, me and several others, and the Lord was moving upon the hearts, the lives of the young people to give their hearts to the Lord. I remember one young man stepped out, about 19 years of age. He walked right down to right in front of me, And he looked at me and said, Gabe, I want to make it right with God. I want to be saved. Could you lead me in the sinner's prayer? And I said, absolutely. Right there that Wednesday night, I led him in the sinner's prayer. Not even a week goes by and I get word he was on a motorcycle. Pouring down rain and it just let up. And he was riding down that motorcycle on that interstate. And his motorcycle hit a wet patch and it flipped him. And he went head first right into a telephone pole. And broke his neck and died. When word got back to me that, that, that afternoon that it happened, the only thing that came to my mind was that night, just a few days ago before that event, where he would walk down that aisle and say yes to Jesus Christ. What I'm saying, young people, is you don't have, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You're not guaranteed the next five minutes. You're not guaranteed the next five days. You're not guaranteed the next five years. You need to make it right right now. God, the Holy Ghost is moving on your heart. All you've got to do is say, Lord, just forgive me. And he'll change you. He'll make you a new creation in Christ Jesus. All you got to do is just say yes. You don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops. You don't have to do any penance. All you've got to do is just say yes. All you've got to do is just say yes. As He deals with your heart, just say yes. Just say yes. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not next year, but today is the day of salvation. Make it right. And the the greatest thing about it 
is when you do, God's not going to look at you and say, what have you done? He's not going to look at your past. He's not going to look at all the bad things that you've done, but He's going to look at your present and change your future and erase your past. He'll erase it. The good thing about it is God doesn't care about your past. He wants you and your present to change your future. Doesn't doesn't matter your past. I know some that's the hang up. You don't understand what I've done. That may be the case in the fact that I don't understand. But you don't understand what he's done for you. To wipe away your past, to take away your past, to give you a new future, to give you a new heart, to change, to give you a new life. All you got to do is just say yes. And when you do, He can change your whole world. The darkness becomes light, death becomes life, the old becomes new. He wants to change you. If you just give Him a chance, He'll change you. And the good thing about it is, God won't look at you and say, you get three strikes and you're out. When you get up and you fail and that third strikes and the devil tells you you've done it, you've blown it, it's over, the Holy Ghost will say, get back up again and swing for the fences one more time. You may fall down, but get back up and get to home plate again and start swinging again. There's no limit while you're here on earth. There's no limit. God's grace is greater than sin. God's grace is greater in my failures. It's greater. His grace is sufficient to save even unto the uttermost. Even if I make my bed in hell, the Bible says that He will be with me. He'll change you where you can say, Mercy rewrote my life. I should have fallen my soul cast way down. But mercy, thank God for His mercy. Without His mercy, we would not be here. Without His grace, we would not be here. But thank God He settled it all at Calvary that I can just come boldly into the throne room of grace and I can find mercy in my time of need. He wants to save you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter the guilt that's hanging over your head. He died to remove the guilt He died to save you, to change you, and to give you a brand new life. The cross is the answer. The cross will make the difference. That's what makes the difference. I can't make it. You can't make it. But the cross makes the difference for me. It was that old rugged cross. Thank God it was that old rugged cross that made the difference and He wants to make it for you right now. He wants to make the difference for you right now. I don't feel led to continue anymore because I feel led in my spirit to give an altar call. And I don't know if there's anyone in here, but I know it's for you. You may be a drunk, but God wants to deliver you. You may be right now in that room battling alcohol with that can of beer in your hand, but I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ will set you free. Jesus Christ will change you and give you a whole new heart and a whole new life if you just let Him. You can look down at the life that you have and know there is no life at all, but I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ can give you a brand new life. He can give you a brand new life. He can give you a brand new life. you just give him a chance. 
It changed your whole world. And as Satan is telling you right now, it's not worth it. I'm here to tell you it is worth it. Try Jesus. What have you got to lose? You've tried everything else and nothing's worked. But I'm here to tell you, try Jesus. What do you have to lose? You have nothing to lose. And you have everything to gain. Nothing to lose but sin and shame and guilt. But you have everything to gain. A life and life more abundant. Eternal life with Jesus Christ. And I'm here to offer Him to you. He loves you. He loves you. And He wants to change your world. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. No one looking around. Tonight, I feel in my spirit the Lord is telling you, it's time. It's time. You've walked away from God, but now it's time. It's time to come home. It's time to come home. I feel that in my spirit. It's time for you to come home. You've wandered for so many years. But it's time for you to come home. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Anybody in this building and those watching by television, by radio, by the internet, how many would say, Pastor Gabe, either I'm not saved, or I need to make things right with God. Raise your hand right now. I pray everybody in this building is saved, but this is for you. There are scores of you that are watching. Scores of you that are listening. The Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart right now about making things right. I want everyone standing. Everyone standing. Here's what I want us to do, whatever they feel led to sing. I want them to sing whatever it is right now. Just go ahead and start singing. Just for a moment, I want us to pray. I want you begin, all you Christians, to begin to seek God. Because I feel that God's dealing with somebody. It may be in here, but I know it's watching. It's time to come home. It's time to come home. Right now, God's dealing with your heart. It's time to come home. You've run so long, and you run. You tried to run away from God, but you can't outrun Him. He's there knocking on the door of your heart. Let Him in. Sing it one more time, Spirit of the Living God. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. This is for you. If you're watching this or listening, you can say, Pastor Gabe, I'm not saved. I want you to know, first and foremost, God loves you. He loves you with all of your heart. With all of His being, He loves you. He died for you. And He wants to save you. It doesn't matter what you've done in this life. You may say that you've been too bad and you're in too deep. But there's never been one that's been too deep for him to rescue. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to say the sinner's prayer. Saying words will not do anything for you, but believing these words. That's what's going to save you. That's what's going to change you. I want you 
want you to believe these words. Say it with all of your heart. The audience here, the singers, they're going to help say it with you to give you strength. And I want you to bow your heads. Close your eyes. And I want you to raise your hands. I want those in the audience to stretch forth your hands as well. And I want you listening and watching to raise your hands as a sign of surrender. And I want you to say it with me and believe it with all of your heart. Dear God in heaven, Dear God in heaven, I come to you. I come to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. The way I've lived. The way I've lived. The things that I've done. The things that I've done. Forgive me. Forgive me. Wash me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. From all unrighteousness. From all unrighteousness. With my mouth. I confess, I confess the, Lord Jesus. the Lord Jesus, and in my heart, in my heart I, believe I believe that God raised Jesus, God raised Jesus from, the dead, from the dead, and He is alive. And, he is alive. and right now, right now at, this moment, at this moment, I believe, I believe that I'm washed, that I'm, washed, that I'm cleansed. That I'm that I'm forgiven, that I am saved. I'm born again. I am saved. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. At that moment, angels in heaven begin to shout a camp meeting because a new name is written down in glory and it belongs to you. Glory to God. I want us to sing the old hymn, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. I want Joseph, if you can, or whoever's going to lead it. I want us to stretch forth our hands right now for a moment. Let's worship him. That's it. Let's sing it right now. How sweet the sound. That saved the wretch. Saved the wretch like me. Once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now one more time. I'm gonna sing it right now. It was amazing grace. Just slip up your hands and worship Him. Just thank Him for His grace and mercy. Let's save the wretch. Let's save the wretch like me. Once was lost. Come on, just one more time. Just one more time. The Spirit of God's in this place tonight. Just thank Him right now for His grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Save the wretch. Just one more time. Before we dismiss, just sing it across this building one more time. Just thank Him right now for His grace. Amazing grace. How sweet that sound. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your presence, for your spirit. Lord, I'm asking that you would give us a greater anointing for souls. Give us a burden for souls. Give us a heart for souls. I'm asking God that your spirit would move upon this youth ministry. For Lord, you have called us to touch this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I believe that we are going to see multiplied millions of young people and young adults brought into the kingdom of God. Give us an anointing to reach this generation for Christ. We ask for your leading and for your guidance. We ask that you would move amongst us and in our midst. That souls will be saved. Believers filled with the Holy Spirit. That lives will be changed. That the sick will be healed. That the blind will see, that the mute would talk, that the deaf would hear, that the dead will be raised. Lord, we believe in a God of miracles. We believe that the day of miracles are not over, but they're just beginning. They are just beginning. They're just beginning. And Lord, we believe that our end will be greater than our beginning. Move amongst us. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. The name that is above all names. Amen. As we sing it one more time before we dismiss, let's just stretch forth our hands one more time and let's just worship Him. Sing it right now. Jesus.